All day, money, power, respect, three the hard way. Hey, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, go. Oh, no, I can't see. <laughs> 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 Welcome back to Three the Hard Way TV, the quarantine edition. We got to look like the Brady Bunch in here on this on this screen and shit. Uh, uh, real in the middle. He the he the uh May Alice and shit. Uh, you know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm go. I'm your host today. I'm Dion. I'm let everybody introduce themselves because there's too many of y'all, man. Go ahead. Whoever want to go. No, back. no, you introduce because you invited us. Okay, you you are absolutely right. We're gonna we I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the ladies. We got the beautiful Brie. We got the beautiful Charmaine. My uncle, the OG. Show my uncle some respect. Triple OG. Then that's right. Turn the camera on me. Turn the camera on me. What's up? <laughs> uh, the, we got the newcomer, Milo. Um, we got all the way Ken. from California. Uh, oh, yo, he all the way in California. All we the got, way in Cali. We, we got Ken, ladies. Y'all starting to realize Ken is hey, well, on Milo, who a dude? I don't see him. You got to scroll to the right. Scroll to your right. He ain't popping up as we talk. How we talking to him? He ain't, he ain't popping up. No, you gotta scroll to your on uh, your right, lad. Just listen, everybody. just listen for his voice. And, and ladies, Jeff is back finally. Y'all can get in this inbox. He's single again too. <laughs> and my boy back, Larry. Oh my, yo, oh my kid. I got something to say too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on today's show, um, we getting into a a a. a, a we gonna see how deep this goes. And my question for everybody here on the panel. Hold on, hold on. I just to inter introduce your boy real. Y'all already know who I am. I introduce you first. Now he got he gotta say me twice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey boy, motherfucker get on YouTube and they ego get too big. You hear me? Look at him. You hear me? I'm from the big city, you know how it is. <laughs> Okay, on, on yeah. today's show, uh, the topic is why does America hate the black man so much? And does it feel like to y'all America is intentionally trying to keep the black man down? Who would like to go first by a show of hands? Okay, we're going to start with Derek. Nobody wants to go. All right, so if you, if you just take a moment and, and y'all just uh, gaze in on my skin complexion. So we know historically and traditionally that um, African people are the first people on earth. And when you look at my skin, that's melanin. That's what determines your skin complexion. And you, can, you can't you can get white race out of white race. Everybody come from us. And, you know, if you look at it from a biblical standpoint, they say, I'm a like mother, like father. So they don't want to know, they don't want America to know or the world to know that we are the true father of the European race. So they try to suppress us and that's why they hate what they're not and they hate what they come from. Okay. Milo, Milo, my boy Milo, what you got for us? We can't hear you, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Can't hear you still. Okay, we're gonna come back to you. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Larry. What you got? Larry? Bree, what do you got? Y'all gonna make me have to do a lot of editing, man. <laughs> I'm gonna have to work hard on this one. Um, why does America hate the black man? That's a very good question. Um, I think it's not so much. I think America has something to do with it because I feel like if we really knew who we really were, where we came from, and where we descended from they would have no 
room in this world. But regardless of America, I feel like we are at war with ourselves. And that's more um, detrimental than America. Because I feel like us as a nation, as a race, I should say, we can take on America. But we can't take on, we can't be a unified front if we're at war with each other. And um, I'm a reader and I observe a lot of things. And I just personally feel like um, this has been the way since the beginning of time. And so whatever wedges that I feel that America, this is why America looks so powerful, is that whatever wedges they can put in between us for whatever selfish reasons, whether it's material, whether it's guns, whether it's women, whether it's money, whether it's anything that can even things from our food to tear down our health, they, they put those things there so that we can self-destruct. So I think that's the bigger war. I just think that we kind of pretty much hand it over as uh, a black race. Well, I would say ethnicity because we're not technically a race because we don't even have nothing to really kind of trace because they make sure that we have been suppressed and all our ancestry has been washed away. So that's just what they gave us. We are the black race or African-American or whatever they label they want to put on us. But everybody else, they have a nationality. Black, we really don't. So. Okay. Ms. Harris, your thoughts? Um, I think that um, black men are seen as a threat because black men have multiple abilities. Um, like athleticism, like you're not going to find a white LeBron or a white Mike. Uh, and that's just natural strength. That's the strength that black men are born with. So they threaten um, with that. And also the ability for black men to hold up a family structure and succeed in doing that. If you take a black man out of the household, then you kind of break the whole structure down. And um, they see that as a threat because um, with a black, a black family together could take over the world. And you know, they feel threatened. They feel like they would be, what is it called when, like they're dying now. They feel like if you keep these black men living, they keep producing these babies, these super strength babies, these intelligent babies, they keep building these kingdoms of families and unity, and they feel like they'll die out. So, you know, the black men is going to continue to be a threat until they try to get rid of them. That's my opinion. Okay, Milo, we're going back to you, buddy. Make sure my audio good, y'all. You, you good? Yep. Yeah. You good. All right, all right. Uh, so, to answer the second part of your question first, uh, white men are definitely threatened by the black race. That is 100% fact. Um, I don't see the reason. I mean, I know we're superior to the white men in every, every way, every aspect we're dominating. But as far as the hatred, I, I'm completely appalled. I don't understand where it's coming from directly. We... We are a kind of race. We don't directly do anything to hurt nobody. You know, we come from a nice background. None of that is we, in our We game. accept them. Exactly. Them. You know, we, we kind-hearted people. We don't cause commotion unless commotion comes to us. We've never been that type. And, I mean, what's going on in America today is just what's been going on since the beginning. Slavery. It's nothing changed. And at this point, I feel like we're just allowing it to keep happening. They're going to keep doing it because they see no action coming from us. And I think that's the biggest thing for us to do right now is to come together, unify, and make something happy. Actions speak louder than words. No more of the nonviolent approach. We march. We speak. You know, all of that, we do it every time, and they just continue to do the same thing. So until we put forth some action, they're going to keep keep doing what they've been doing. That's, that's what I feel. Okay. Um. Do you, do you feel like 
it's uh it's being done intentionally oh most definitely every black person in america is being targeted right now from children infants all the way to adults every single black person in america okay ken what's what's your thoughts buddy i definitely uh agree with everyone that just spoke we we, we definitely are feared like um it's 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 just so much that we do like we 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 so we educated we we got spirit you know we got morals we got values we just and it's like it's natural it's just like embedded in us but it's like we've been so like brainwashed like we swear away from it. you know what i'm saying like we party and drinking and like we really are like kings and queens but We'll be unstoppable. Unstoppable. Jeff, what you got for us, man? Uh, it really start off with the police, man. To me, because you know, police. I don't know why. Why they always killing those black people? They be lying, talking about he got a gun and all that. That's what all this generation about. Police is really messing up us. That's everything that this, this, and this environment right now to this day. So, I always wanted to know why we were the target of everything. Now, see why. It's envy. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, yeah. real. What? You, go ahead, brother. All right. So, so I had just, to, I had to say you for last because I know you wrote a speech. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I ain't got a speech for this one because at this point, I feel like it's simple. Um, I think one of the biggest reasons is why, why they kind of hate us <clears throat> is because they know our potential. But I feel a lot of times we as a black race, we don't know our own potential. So we, they know how high we can go and what we can do. So they suppress us to keep us from, you know what I'm saying? They give us the bare minimum and we accepting of that. And like Milo was saying, it's time that we stop accepting just anything. So we need action, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like another thing is like, they do it just enough to keep us from rising up because they know if we left America, it's over. You know what I'm saying? They can't really survive without us. We survive wherever we go. You trace it back to Egypt, wherever black people was, we thrived and survived. So they know without us here, it's over. Look at all the great inventions that ever happened was either stolen from us or now we finally getting credit for it. So I feel like one, we don't know our potential. Two, you know, they keep, they, they scare us just enough, kill a few black people. Everybody's scared to make a sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Like all of us on here right now, we know we need action and we like, what can we do? But who really go go out there and risk their life? Cause at the end of the day, if I go out there and do something to stand for us and I get killed, who gonna take care of my family? Exactly. Like our race just not in a financial, a financial position to back each other and i feel like that's a big problem like we like the resources we don't like the knowledge because we got the knowledge but we like the unity and then just the comment on what jeff was saying he feels it's the police i don't feel it's the police all police ain't bad it's a system of police right it's the system that they put in and it's just the system is corrupt no matter if a black guy going there and become a police or not the system is corrupt so it's nothing you can do about that so we could talk about it individually all over the place. We got black people all over the United States, but until we figure out a way to become uniform, you know, become a uniformity together and have a financial backing, nobody's, who want to be the next Malcolm X? Nobody, because you scared you go die and what's going to happen to your family? So until we get that part, we're going to continue to be the same way. We also got to start watching the words that we say. I don't like to hear that we're not unified. We, it, it's definitely people waking up. There are definitely people coming together. There are definitely um, changes happening and people are taking action on that. We need to do more research that, so that we can see that that's what's really happening. Maybe in the past that wasn't it, but now people are definitely waking up. We have to put that positive energy out there and stop saying, because we don't come together. We, yes, we will. It you definitely happen. do see an uprising of black people coming together. I agree so 100%. We have, to, we have to start thinking that way so it can happen. When we dwell in that sad-ass 
oh, it's never going to happen. Energy, it never will. But when you say, oh, yeah, people come together, they just... Right. Oh, so yeah, I feel... You know, you have to speak that into existence so that it can happen. So, you know... I feel like they, they are coming together, but I feel like enough of us is not outraged at what's right. going on. Small we see groups. it, but we so... We so desensitized to it, and it's small groups over here in Atlanta, a small group in Chicago, a small group in New York, and it's not enough of us that's like, you know what, enough is enough. That's what I mean by unified. Like, like one agenda. You know, the, the young that's man what we got, mean by unity. We need to be on one agenda. Yeah. Okay. Like the young man that got killed. Educating people that don't know. Go to these corners where you know your homie selling drugs at, or your little cousin. Start educating them. Stand out there with them. Talk to them. This is what yeah. this is what has to happen. If you don't know, then you don't know what to do. You right. know what to go. So those are the risks that we can take right now. I mean, there we can't go. be popping up to the White House and we ain't got our ducks in a row. So start with your community. Educate these young brothers. Okay, y'all out here selling what y'all selling. Let me tell y'all about this. Let me tell y'all what's really going on. And just plant a seed and let it grow from there. You know? All right. You know what? Dion, what do you feel? I I, I was gonna say that um you know, I, I most definitely feel the hate. It's it's even, even with everything that's going on with us having having to wear the mask, it being mandatory. It's still like they look at me sideways when I walk in with my mask on, and I'm looking at them like, "You got one on too, motherfucker." Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, it's uh, I don't really understand why they hate us so much, but then they want to be like us so much. It's like it's okay for them to to wanna. Uh, be like us is okay for them to want the melanin, but it's like they don't want to be black. They just want to, and you know, I, I don't really know how to explain. It's like they want to, yeah, they want to take, right. they want to take, they want to take ah, uh, you know, all of our originality and make it theirs. But then yeah. they don't want the title of being a nigga. You know yeah, what I'm saying? They don't want the hardship behind it. They just want all the accomplishments that come with it. Everything That's great exactly. they want. They're right. greedy, envious. Human beings. Point blank. It's just period. jealous because black men are the bomb in every which way, shape, and form. Every which way, shape, and form. They just, it's a little hate there, you know? Hey, go, go, ahead, know. go ahead, drop some knowledge on us, Dad. I see you over there, man. You, 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 He's soaking it in. He, He's soaking it in. I mean, you know, I mean, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just, uh, you know, uh, you know, get some information, you you know, from, from y'all perspective, you know, so, but I'm not going to have two, three conversations at one time. So I think that, you know, what we're looking at, you know, the question is why do America hate black men? You know, right. like I said, I can only give it from a historical uh, standpoint from the knowledge that, you know, that, that I'm privy to is that uh, throughout history, you know, when you come in and you're talking about the concept of race, race is not, there's no such thing as race. Only race is is the human race. And who simply mean the most possible darkest complexion. So when you come over into the diaspora of the United States, then they want don't you know they keep us from our true heritage because if you look at it from historic context, we know way back in maybe uh the year six um BC that black people, you know, navigated over here to America be before. So they were the actual founders of America. So once you keep a person disenfranchised, you keep them enslaved mentally because now they don't want you to know your true heritage because they know that, you know, once again, that 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 the creator, he, he entrusted us with the earth in the beginning. So now when you look at a population, you know, like the sister said that, you know, white people, you know, they have a genetic defect. So their population is dying out. So we the only race that can procreate with any other race and bring out a black child. So, and we continue to grow. Um, right now in the United States, we got about 45 million black people. And, you know, during the Civil War, we may start off like 1 million, 200,000 or so that came over here. So from a historical context, you know, um, once a, a person holds you into captivity, then they, they gonna, they're never gonna hold you or uphold you as their equal. So in order for the white man to admit that, uh, or hold you as an equal, then they have to say, hey, slavery was wrong, and we've done a lot of things to black people that we shouldn't have, so now all the free money that they get, now, you know, blacks deserve reparations, so it's easier for them to hate 
uh, then to embrace us and, and admit the fact that, you know, they were wrong through uh, invading Africa, through slavery, through disenfranchised, through, through Jim Crow laws, through uh, the rape and pillaging of, of, of the black communities that we formed. I think I heard, um, you know, uh, uh, Keeping It Real talked about how we don't come together as a unity, but if, throughout historically, every time we came together as a unity, some white people came and, and dropped bombs on those communities. So we mm-hmm. do come together. So, what you know, even today we got a lot of communities fighting for the black cause, but we just can't let everybody in because they're going to run and tell and they, you know, we, they're going to inf- infiltrate, you know, um, and run and tell mass. You know, hey, they, they planning on organizing, they planning on investing or having a group economics and things of that nature. So I think we need to just think about things from a historical context. As they say, if you learn your past, then you know your past. Mm-hmm. Uh, I heard that one other know? question for uh for Milo. For Milo, because I know you you was in the Navy, yeah, right? Five years Navy. So you've been all so you've been all over the world and stuff recently. Yes, sir. How was you treated in other places versus how you treated here? That's funny you asked. I was just talking about this to uh, one of my homies. Yeah. Uh, once you get out of the states. It's a completely different feeling being black in the in the world. You don't have to worry about looking over your shoulder, always being alert. You can you can you know, mellow out, calm down, and you get to enjoy life for once. You know what I mean? In America, it's always this this antsy feeling inside of you, like when is it going to be my time? Because you know it's coming in America. It's it's inevitable being a black man in America. Once you get out and experience different cultures and everybody's race and how they interact night and day difference I, I, I tell people all the time if you can leave leave if you don't want to come back you ain't got to but i understand if you do and you know um like derek was just talking about the reparations and them admitting uh they wrong they would have to pay us one of the things that i always uh yeah i'm, I'm not gonna say it upset me per se but why did the united states give uh, Jewish people reparations for something that Hitler did, but they can't give us reparations for something that they did to our forefathers. Because we didn't take over the world. Yeah, they know. They know. That's why they keep these systems in place. They know once we get an inch, we're gonna take more than a mile, and they fear that. Well, they they kind of Any... go back to uh. Go ahead, Milo. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, it kind of go back to what Derek was saying. Like if you um. If they do that, they got to admit that they was wrong. And like he was right. saying, they don't want to admit that, and they also don't want to embrace us as an equal or on no other level that they own. So it's easy for them to give it to somebody else that somebody else did something to, but they'll never give it to us because we right here with them. You know what I'm saying? Do y'all, y'all, do y'all even know that they gave reparations to um, – um, the the Japanese and uh, yeah. Hiroshima, mm-hmm. everybody, them, them dropping the yes. bomb on them. They they mm-hmm. they gave the Americans that were here in the United States, not the people in Japan, the people that were here mm-hmm. that weren't even affected by them dropping that bomb on Hiroshima. They gave them reparations, yeah. so that enabled them to grow, and, and you know from that time period and, and, and accumulate more money for their families. I'm, I still want my goddamn 40 acres in a mule, man. I don't give a yes, fuck sir. if they like me or not. Yes, sir. <laughs> right. Hey, but you know what, though? That's why we need... That's what That's what I'm saying. Like, we need, like... We need to, like, have, like, a a, a leader. Like, somebody can, who ain't afraid to talk. It could have been Nipsey Hussle, to be honest with you. He knew a lot. They kill all of these believers. Yep. We have them, but in this society today, you have to be so quiet about your moves and you don't really have the time and resources to gather enough people to make anything happen because they're going to come kill you. It's, it's going to happen. They the target you. solution, I think, get the fuck out of America, period. Because once you go, Marcus you go Garvey, man. Way. Once you're gone, it's gonna clap. It's not gonna like they gonna kill each other off, and when they do that, then we can come back. Other than that, you know, I don't see a, a, a you know 
a solution in in my foresight. Like you just gotta go. Don't be afraid to pack up. Yeah, food. yeah, I, I understand that, but that isn't feasible for everybody right now. Hey. Uh, if it can happen, I would want it to happen, but right now that isn't just something everybody can jump up and do. Or shit, let's just let's just separate this motherfucker. Let's separate this motherfucker. We all go south, and they can have the north part of it. Then we're really big. I'm 100% for that. <laughs> 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 I know with them hurricanes and floods, they then where we gonna go? Hey, no, no. Nah, nah, they can hide this cold shit. I'm, I'm fine. It. They can hide everything above Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that shit. Yeah. I mean, there's no, it's no one solution to it. Um, like Derek said, you know, study the past. Don't so you won't repeat it. But there's no one solution to it. Leaving here because we leave here, we got to be accepted somewhere else. So and they welcome us. They say, "Come back home to Mother Africa. Come on back." Well, I'm not going anywhere. Me neither. You know, my people. You know, somebody made a sacrifice. You know, during the transatlantic slave trade, you had about 20 million Africans enslaved from over 400 years and. You know, my people, you know what I'm saying, they was enslaved and, and that's why my, you know, my rooms run deep and, you know, somebody made a sacrifice for me to be over here. Over half of the people who was enslaved, about 10 million of them died. They never made it over here. So the other 10 million who over the 400 years, you know, somebody through my bloodline, they made it a sacrifice for me to be here. So all and, mind. and they enslaved and they work on plantation. And you know, if you go into the south, my family come from the deep south, uh, not too far from uh, to, from Natchez, Mississippi, where you had the fork in the North road where the actual slave trade took place. So my family come from the deep south, and they sacrificed and tore to survive. So you know, you know, we own the part of America. So I'm not going anywhere. So why would I go somewhere we already built in this country so another race can survive, and we just gonna run in? And, and jump and leave, you know, expecting some other country, where are you going to go? Because you don't know, you know, Africa is a continent. It's not a country. You have, you know, you have hundreds of tribes in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. you, got, you, you got Africa, you got, you got, you could take maybe one, one country or two countries in Africa or one country that's bigger than the whole United States. So when we say, okay, well, I'm going to leave, well, what? Anyway, now, that's not saying they, 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 they won't embrace us. But if we if we fall and tore from you know our family fighting in the Civil War, you know before that our people fought in the Revolutionary War, they fought in the Spanish American Indian War. So I'm not going anywhere. And hey, that's why I said split it in half. <laughs> well, I mean, had the South won the Civil War, see, we will be split. So you know they. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I don't know if you really want that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, with, with all, all the black folk on one side, all, all the motherfuckers who need sunscreen on the other side. That's all yeah. I'm saying. True, true. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. What? So good point. So, so um, we go pass around the panel for closing thoughts. Everybody get a closing thoughts. Or, or uh, if what anybody you got a question for anything that anybody else said, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Well, I just want to say do best, do what's best for yourself and your family. Um, try to find a solution for y'all and hopefully things will work out. Okay. Go ahead, Ken. It's start. Once we start, like what Sean say, we got like once we start with self and, and reevaluate and like get a, a, a deep learning. And I feel like it don't matter how long it can take, when it's going to take, like, once we fully awaken, like, we going to make something happen. It's, it's, it's coming. Change coming. I feel the change coming. We just don't know when. Go ahead, Jeff. One thing I can say is uh, we can just – we can just keep learning, and then once our kids start growing or whatever, teach them the same thing, everything will fall in place. Okay. 
I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all brothers uh, go last. I, I'm gonna say this from here on out, star tomorrow, all the white people I see, I'm gonna I'm get them a hug when I see them, and I'm gonna tell them it's okay. Embrace me, white man. I am not your enemy. Okay. Hey, before we before somebody else comment on what he said, I want you to let me know what you want on your tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to just, just they just location. shot a they just shot a boy from running down the street. So when you walk up the hood, one of these, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> just let me know. I rather be prepared, my man. Yeah, go, go, I mean, I, go I, ahead, Milo. Go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. I, mean, I think uh, you know you, we just need to focus on self acceptance. You know, I think as long as we continue to live our life expecting other people to accept us, then we move backwards. So, shit, we don't accept each other just walking to the corner store. You, you know, we, we're afraid of each other in our own community. So once we begin to learn how to embrace each other, if we see them young guys on the corner, we know they may be taking a certain path, but if we acknowledge them, then I think they're going to turn down a lot of the, the, the <coughs> fuckery that they be a, a part of. So I think it's more important for us to begin to embrace ourselves and our true self before we want an outside race to embrace it. So, you know, that's my thoughts on that. Okay. Real, Milo? Yeah, so first I just want to say rest in peace to Ahmad Arbery and the brother uh, Sean Reed. And um, I think we just need to continue to educate ourselves on the system we live in and the society, continue to promote unity, self-love, black love, and I mean, like like everybody just said, they know a change coming. Once we knock those tasks out, we're gonna be unstoppable. So just stay focused, black people. Change is coming. Okay. Real Bree. Brittany. Um She wanna go last. I, I didn't. You were calling everybody's name and you said if we were you, to go you out all mute, so I ain't say your name. One. Right, you ain't gotta put my business out there because I was moving around. <laughs> God, see this this is why we're gonna be back. That go 10 years right now. Cause they they, they want to be at war with each other <laughs> all the time. Too many chiefs. <laughs> um, anywho, uh I would just say um be the change you want to see in the world. And I feel like everybody else. I've, I've always been a firm believer that learning starts at home. So if we penetrate our families, especially our immediate families, especially our young men, that's going to go out into the world to be that, be that two striker already because you're black in America and because you're a black man in America let them know that those are the odds but they're not but they're obstacles that you can get over so i feel like again we need to be the change we want to see and make sure that we are infectious and depositing that same energy into those closest to us so that we can pen permeate the rest of society and that's it okay um i feel like the piggyback kind of what derek was saying like i think sometimes um we think we think on a larger scale too fast like we're so busy trying to make the world accept us when we need to start in our own neighborhoods where we at start there because that's really your world the world is so big you you like a grain of salt but the world you live in is where so try to start to change there and then another big thing is like because i live in multiple states is I, I encourage people to be aware of where you live at what state you live in what city you live in because it's, it's racism and stuff everywhere but a lot of this shooting and stuff it happened in certain places seem like to be consistently and those places got, it's different laws for state levels, you know what I'm saying, municipal and all that. So just be aware of where you at and what's going on in your area. Okay, man, I want to thank y'all all for coming on. 
dropping y'all knowledge. You know, we try we tried to stay the course and 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 stay focused. I know it's it's kind of hard to uh, do that when you know we talking about uh, a race of people. Emotions get a little high, and we can uh, sway from the subject a little bit. We tried to keep it on point as as much as possible. And uh, you know, if y'all like this video, y'all go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave your comments below. Um, man, I appreciate y'all tonight, man. I ain't saying goodbye and saying everybody's name either this time because it's too many of y'all. <laughs> Just wave Just back to the people. That subscribe <laughs> button. <laughs> subscribe button on the bottom. <laughs> and we'll see y'all later. Three to hard way. All day, money, power, respect. Three to hard way.